Hey guys, welcome back to the sixth video. Now in this video, we will be taking a look into how to use the GPIO as a digital input on your STM32 nuclear board. And we'll be doing this with the help of this blue push button. So let's get started. So now there are two things we will have to look into the things that are happening outside the microcontroller, which are on your nuclear board. That is basically the circuit around the push button and the things that are happening inside the microcontroller. So firstly, let's get started with the things that are happening outside the microcontroller and the things and the circuit which has been soldered on your nuclear board. For that, I have the nuclear schematic uh, open in front of me. And as you can see on the right, uh, we have the user blue B1 push button, which is a momentary push button. And uh, the digital input is connected to PC13, which is port C, pin 13. And that goes across uh, a zero ohm jumper, which is uh, SB17, which has been already soldered on. So not really important. So let's see what's happening around the push button. So this particular point is the point at which uh, the button is connected to uh, the digital input or pin 13. So the voltage at this particular wire will be read by the microcontroller. So this particular point is pulled up uh, by a 4.7K ohm resistor and the button is not pressed. And then on the other side, there is ground. And then there is a capacitor and a resistor which we'll be looking uh, into at a later part point in this video. But let's come back to this point. So since there is 3.3 volts over here, which is the VDD and the button is not pressed, this particular wire is at 3.3 volts. So that means when the button is not pressed, I will be reading a voltage level of 3.3 volts at the microcontroller input. And when you press the button, this particular point gets pulled low through this resistor and then goes to ground. And then I will read zero volts over here. So this was all the things that was happening outside the microcontroller. So let's go and check what's happening inside a GPIO pin of the microcontroller. So in the previous video, we saw the output configuration of uh, your GPIO pin, where we saw how we were configuring the uh, GPIO output as a push-pull or an open train. But that part is already done and not important uh, for this video. So let's go ahead and hide it. So let's start from the right this time. So the goal is to reach a particular voltage level uh, at this particular point over here so that the input data register sets a particular bit to zero or one. So on the IO pin, we actually saw that it has been pulled up. So we don't actually need the internal pull up and pull down. So these switches will be switched off uh, by our software configuration. And then there's this thing called as a Schmidt trigger. So let's go ahead and check what's going on with this Schmidt trigger. So there's this very nice explanation from how to mechatronics and I'll leave the link in the description below. Uh, so there's also a nice video and but what is important for this uh, moment is this particular uh, photo over here. So as you can see there is uh, this left side, there's a graph on the left and we have a blue line which is the voltage at the input of your input pin which is the PC13 pin of your microcontroller. Uh, so as you can see, it's a noisy input. That is why it is uh, jumping up and down. And let's say, for example, there is no Schmidt trigger inside your microcontroller and there is only a single threshold. Any values above the threshold are detected as a GPIO input high by your microcontroller. And any voltage values below that particular threshold are detected as GPIO input voltage low by your microcontroller. But from this particular time to this particular time, my assumption was that I had thoroughly pressed the user button, but because your uh, GPIO input is noisy, there was a time when the voltage dropped below the single threshold and due to which it registered as a low input. So this, is, this happens because of, uh, well, noise EMI in general, because we don't live in an uh, ideal world. So basically the input uh, read by the code bounces up and down 
and what we want is to debounce it. So this is basically debouncing a GPIO input. Now this can be easily avoided by using a Schmidt trigger either on the outside or if your microcontroller has it inbuilt on the inside. So the Schmidt trigger has an upper threshold and a lower threshold. So the voltage uh, read by your code uh, at, at the PC13 pin will only be registered as high if it reaches the upper threshold and it will be only be registered as a low GPIO input if it crosses the lower threshold. So that is about it from the Schmidt trigger point of explanation. So if you go back to our schematic, there was also an RC component to it. This RC component can be also looked upon as uh, a hardware way of uh, debouncing your uh, particular GPIO input. So this 100 nanofarad capacitor basically holds this particular uh, line, which is also the input to your microcontroller at a particular value for a very short period of time until you press the, the GPIO button and you leave it. This provides a sure shot way of debouncing a particular uh, GPIO input. That being said, let us start coding. Uh, so here we go, we are in the stm 32 cube ID and I've just created a basic project with the Nucleo 32 F303 RE board like we did in the previous videos. And as you can see, we are in the clock configurator tool with the PC13 pin, which has been already configured for us. But let us go in system core and GPIO. And there are two GPIO configured. So we already looked into the digital output in the previous video. Now let's select PC13 and check what they have configured it. So they have actually configured it as an external interrupt mode with falling edge trigger detection. But let us take things slowly and reconfigure it as only a GPIO input. So I'm just going to click on the PC13, uh, a left click, and then go ahead and select GPIO input. And then come back to my GPIO configurator window and select input mode. No pull up and pull down as we have already pulled it up on the external. User level, let's say B1 button. So that is about it. Let us hit the code generation button. All right, so here we go. We have generated the code and we don't no longer need the device configurator tool. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. Next up, we will be jumping to the MX GPIO init function. Now we already saw in the previous video how to uh, declare an initialization structure and en en enable the clocks. So not important uh, for this video, but what is important is this particular part of the code where you assign the members of the GPIO init structure, the values which we configured. And this code is already generated. We assign it uh, the pin as this particular P1 button pin, which is particularly the PC13 pin. And then we set the mode to GPIO mode input. And then there is no pull up and pull down as we have externally pulled it up. And then we initialize it with the HAL GPIO function, HAL GPIO init function by passing uh, the GPIO init structure for that particular port. So that is about it for the initialization part. Let's go back to main and you can see the MX GPIO init is already called over here. Now what we want to do needs to be done over here in the while one. So let us first write um, a pseudocode as to of uh, the things which we want to achieve. The goal is if I press the button and if I keep it pressed, the LED must be turned on. And if I unpress the button or if I leave it, the LED must go off. So as long as the button is pressed, the LED will be on. So how shall we do that? So firstly, I'll be reading status of the GPIO button pin. Next, I'll check if it is high or low.
if uh, pressed turn LED on if not pressed turn LED off so let us actually write the C code for this pseudo code now how to do that first let's see how to read the status of the GPIO pen for that I will have to jump to the HAL GPIO library and that can be done by pressing F3 on any particular HAL GPIO function or navigating it through uh, your project explorer instead of the write pin we need uh, the GPIO read pin function for that we need to pass two arguments uh, the GPIO port which is of this particular type and the GPIO pin this function returns a value which is of type GPIO pin state what is GPIO pin state so if I press F3 it's a type def of an enumeration uh, so GPIO pin reset uh, has been assigned zero and anything apart from that so anything apart from zero is GPIO pin set so let's go back to our GPIO C and then copy this and paste it in our while one so here we go we have the function let us first pass uh, all the arguments where do i find that i find that in uh, the main.h so here we have the b1 button uh, gpio port paste it and next up i need the b1 button pin then i will paste it forget the semicolon so this function actually returns a value which I need to store in a particular variable. So let us first declare that variable as an 8-bit uh, unsigned integer. Let's call it button value. Let's just initialize it with 0. And then store the value, the return value, in a variable called as button value. So next up, I need to check if this particular button val is either 0 or 1. Now remember 0 means the button is pressed. So I just write an if saying button val equals equals 0. That means the button is pressed. And inside this if, I'll also copy back my comment. And then there is else. So how to turn the LED on? We do that with uh, the right pin function. Just copy this whole thing. And then we need the port of the LED2 pin, which is the green LED. And then we need the LD2 pin, which is GPIO pin 5. And then we do a set. So we turn it on. And then the opposite over here. So I'm just going to copy the same function, but set it to reset. So if button val equals uh, 0, then, which means the button is pressed, I will turn on my LED. Now let us go ahead and compile this. Okay, there we go. Zero errors and zero warnings. Now, as you can see, the green LED is not blinking uh, or not high. So let us go ahead and press the button and the green LED is on. And if I leave it, it's off, on, off. Now, this can also be done in a much better way. Uh, so we can actually call this whole function, which is the HAL GPIO read pin function inside this if and avoid using um, actual integer or integers or numbers inside uh, your if. So say, for example, uh, you have written this uh, code where you actually want to invert uh, the values of all your GPIO uh, buttons or whatever switches or push buttons you have connected that means you will have to change this particular zero in all the if statements you have written 
so in order to avoid that what you can do is define a particular macro so if the button is finished i'll define it as zero i can then replace this zero with pressed i also can copy this whole function and put it inside this if then i don't need to read the status and store it in a particular variable so i also don't need this so by checking inside the if so whenever this if statement is called it also calls this particular function and checks if it's equal to the value which is assigned or defined to pressed this is another way of doing it you can also uh, define a particular macro uh, for this particular uh, function call so you can also do that quite easily so let's just also do that and let's call it as define check button and then there goes the entire function call so now i need to replace this all right so that's quite clean so if check button equals equals pressed which means the button has been pressed turn the led on else turn it off let's go ahead and compile and we did not make any errors so well uh, that was easy now there are several things you can do to play around with it right now the led is only uh, on as long as we keep the button pressed but what if i want to keep the led on after only one press so i press once the led stays on if i press again and leave the button the led goes off it's just a matter of coding and if you know how to do that it's a good exercise but there are more things to it uh, than just reading the hal gpio read pin and then checking in and if else if the button has been pressed or not because if we look at our while loop uh the only thing the microcontroller is doing is is checking a particular state of a particular gpio but generally there are a lot of things running here after uh your if and in the while let's say you are communicating with a particular module over uart or spi or you are blinking more and more leds with the hal delay function so the hal delay function actually uh, provides a blocking delay that means if you actually go and open and check the hal delay function uh, there's a while uh, loop inside it and it just keeps on rotating uh, executing nothing inside the while loop and checking for a particular delay timeout what happens if your processor is actually inside a blocking delay and at that is the exact same time you press the gpio button clearly it will miss the if statement because your processor is only doing one thing at a particular time so the if statement on line 104 will be missed and then you're basically uh, your, the human interaction of the gpio button uh, will be missed so how to tackle that problem it's a one word answer and it's a rather uh, straightforward approach but it's a topic for some another video Uh, so we'll be uh, taking a deeper look um, into that in the upcoming videos but for this video that's all see you in the next one